The new time capsule is going to go here where the 25th was. It'll be a little bit bigger, and we would like to put in material from the 25th, certainly the plaque from the 35th, Good. and then also some of the stuff that uh, Jan and Cam put together for this year. So I would like to introduce Cam Allen, who is going to lead this. I guess it's a show. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, and in a, a moment we'll be, to be looking at the contents of the uh, time capsule, and then we'll be displaying them <coughs> in behind here for anybody who wishes to uh, take a look. I think when they were uh, trying to decide who might uh, do this job, they looked for the oldest relic they could find, and so I was nominated to uh, take this job on. Uh, I'd like to just recognize... Uh, the chairperson of the 25th reunion, Mark, if you would stand up for wave. Mark Scott is here. Uh, she ran a very successful 25th reunion and really the lessons learned there uh, enabled us to have a successful 35th and now we hope a successful 50th. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to simply walk over there act a little surprised because I'm not exactly sure what's in there. <laughs> uh, tell you what it is and then my assistant will be displaying them on the tables. When I'm finished with the 25th, and I will show you what remains of the 35th, and we can display what there is, uh, Jen Madge will be explaining or just inviting people? <coughs> okay. Uh, Jen is a former student who's taken on a very big role in this reunion, and one of those roles is to uh, create things today for the 50th reunion, <coughs> that will be open, who knows when, 60th, 75th, I don't know, and I'm not sure if I'm here for <laughs> Not for sale, reunion poster. Uh, the artwork here, was that designed by Monty Wright, art teacher, or did he do it for the 35th? Anyway, we had students or staff uh, design some of the logos. We had, uh, over the years, sometimes contests. Uh, among students, and uh, this is the 25th reunion poster. There are available in the double gym old yearbooks for sale for like a dollar or two, and there are also, I think, being given away freely uh, a program that was put together for the 25th reunion, and it will have this, I believe, on the cover of it. So if you want to take advantage of that, item number one, mobile assistant. <laughs> Say to your kids, or your kids can say, what the heck is that thing? <laughs> 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 what the heck is a CD? I've got everything in my iPod. Anyway, we have in here Memories of Southwood 72 to 87 and Memories of Southwood 62 to 71. And in brackets, the history of rock and roll. <laughs> so for a lot of us, there's probably some really good stuff in here where you can understand the words that were being sung. <laughs> and I will make no further comment on modern music. <laughs> well, a, these are minutes, I guess we kept Mark. A financial statement. And uh, I think you owe the school some money. <laughs> You're free to look at these, by the way. This contains uh, reunion tickets. Obviously, Ted Carlton's little ID badge. You've noticed we've spared no expense this year. <laughs> Stickers. Uh, second mailing. Very interesting, having worked on all three of them, to find the extreme difference in this one and the last two. The last two required extensive mailing to people before they had email addresses. And now we communicate it almost exclusively through email, a website, and it totally changed the landscape in terms of how we were able to contact people. So I hope, if you're still interested in future get-togethers, that You've taken advantage of the opportunity to leave us your email. I know people change their email as most frequently as they change their underwear, but people change a lot. If you could keep that updated and keep looking at the site. We're going to keep that site, if you are among the people who used it, Southwood's 50th My Event com. We're going to keep that active for one year following the reunion in the hope that people will use it as a means to stay in touch with their friends and with the school. If they do, we will renew it. 
and if it's not used, we will discontinue. It will be there, however, for one year. The people who are doing the Hall of Fame, if I'm going too long, just tell me, you know, shut up. There's a mailing list. A picture of Bingaman Park, where we all went. Yeah. Uh, large crowd. How many people were at Bingaman Park for the 25th? All right. How many people were the 35th? I think Good. Lots of old people in here. I like that. <laughs> uh, 25th reunion, I thought it said cremation, it says confirmation. <laughs> I won't open all of these. Some of these are tickets and memorabilia, so they are in the folder called Buttons and Tickets, which my highly trained assistant is now going to take. And the other ones, you're welcome to look at all of this, by the way. There we go. Uh, the next folder is a bunch of thank you letters. I won't uh, read those two, but they are thank yous on behalf of the uh, people who did work here uh, on the reunion and are thanking people in the community who supported it. A list of registrants. Now you might find your name, former address on here because this thing is several pages thick and it would be everybody who registered for number 25 <coughs> in 1987. This is a 1962 car. Doesn't look like it. Oh, there's a picture of it. And anybody here drive that thing? <laughs> Yours? I wish. <laughs> it's behind the, uh, so that was taken probably in 87 because it's behind the bleachers, which... That was the one that was wrong. That's the one that was raffled. You are right. Good memory. That's the first time I heard that. Because you had a lot of pride. I hate to tell you it's going to be the last. That's a copy of a yearbook, looks like the Proofs Reunion yearbook. The Reunion newspaper, uh, which was on. Here, picture of all the students in the school forming SSS 25. Uh, the one that's done this time celebrates three reunions, is on sale for a toonie, and it's uh, really a spectacular production uh, coordinated by Dave Maneri and, and Irene Denny Schmidt, if I said that name correct. And they did a great job. If you want some memories and some really touching stories by people about some of the staff members who have passed away, if you knew Jerry Weaver very well, or People like that. That was a much loved teacher, and there's a wonderful tribute to him. Uh, also, a tribute to a younger teacher who passed away, Tim Walker. And it's just a really good paper, so uh, if you get a chance to buy it for two bucks, do so. Letterhead and envelopes. Well, you kept a lot better notes than I did when I ran the uh, This is the actual yearbook, which we have several of. You can pick them up, I think you're being given away. There were a lot of extra things discovered in the school uh, when we began to organize for this. No bodies, but lots of extra stuff. <laughs> and this is local newspaper coverage. Uh, this says Cambridge Times. It's probably something from the Cambridge Reporter because the newspapers uh, have always helped us out a lot in terms of publicity as they did this time. And smaller versions of programs. A little bit more here to go on the 25th. I imagine it is a banner for the 25th. And if uh, we get it not upside down, maybe Stuart and I can hold that up for you to see. Oh, he's the principal. I just be patient with him. Okay, so that's uh, the banner from number 25. We have banners from all of the reunions. I'm not sure if we have all the old ones, but a lot of banners uh, hopefully have seen uh, all over town. And uh, there's some on the side of the school that have our ways of publicizing things. Uh, more reunion programs. A list of yearbook <coughs> orders. If you want to look through some of this stuff and find your name from years ago, your name, address, and stuff might be in there if you're interested in doing that. Something secret in here. <laughs> Oh, a stamp. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> no, the ink dried up in the last 25 years. Uh, that was just a stamp we used for stamping checks, I guess, Mark. That was part of the fun, wasn't it, getting checks. Knowing we could pay for it. 
pictures from the uh, opening ceremonies. I uh, might need you again, Stuart. This looks like another challenge for the principal of the school. <laughs> Just a different banner that we must have displayed at some point. If you just uh, <laughs> turn around and read that. So that will also be on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might be in here too. Yes, book. Everybody signed. This is for asking people to sign in now. That will be on display for all those who attended the 25th. Some of those are it says to Mark Scott original photos, so I don't know what's in here. Nothing. <laughs> A supply book with. Holy crap, that's weird. Exactly, <laughs> Mark. This is just a list of all the meetings that were held. We started for this one two and a half years ago. And uh, a lot of work goes into it. Uh, Ryan Riddell, where are you? Just raise your hand. I said this earlier about Glenn Waslick doing the staff breakfast, which we held this morning. A lot of people work on things, but without the influence, incredible energy and drive of one person, it doesn't get done. So raise your hand again, Brian, because you're that person. Too. Five years ago, I might have attempted to impress you by blowing up this balloon, but I don't want to turn blue in the face before the balloon turns red, so this is a reunion balloon. And that is the 25th. Of, I'll just get a small sample of what we've got. There's a thing sealed airtight. Paul Paquette, who went to incredible work. I think you actually created a newspaper from the school, didn't you, Paul? The Southwood Chronicle? That's right, Which yeah. chronicled all events in the school and when we opened this up we were very sad to see it. Now you can still read some of it mm -hmm. and uh, we intend to preserve it as best we can. So that is the end of my part of the ceremony. Thank you for bearing with me. of our alumni. And I, I've always found, looking at the three different schools that I've been principal at, that regardless of the age of the school, regardless of the size of the school, there are some incredible things that happen as our graduates move on from here off into, I guess, the real world, we seem to call it. Now this year, being our 50th anniversary, it certainly heightens the awareness of who has been here and, and who has moved on and who has returned to celebrate with us. And I'm excited today to have had a chance to uh, meet and have brief conversations with our two inductees, uh, Fred Klinkhammer, and it's class of 67, and Sandra Hardy from 76. And the one really nice thing for me uh, as principal, you get to meet these really great people who you didn't teach because they were here before you, but you get to find out so much about them and almost live vicariously through some of the achievements and some of the things that they have done over their years. Sandra was talking about having the opportunity to live all over the country in a variety of different places and that's that's something that certainly I would like to be able to do mm -hmm. and Fred we've had a chance to share a little bit about uh, Bermuda as I was fortunate enough to spend three years there as well and, and he and his wife are now living there 
So, congratulations to our two new inductees, and again, to everyone here, welcome and thank you for coming. Sandra Hardy is Executive Vice President, General Counsel, and Corporate Secretary of the Cadillac Fairview Corporation Limited. Cadillac Fairview owns and manages over 85 properties, including some of Canada's landmark developments, such as Toronto Eaton Center, Toronto Dominion Center, and the Pacific Center in Vancouver. Ms. Hardy oversees the provision of legal services for the company. As a member of the Executive Committee, Ms. Hardy develops and drives the corporate strategy. She provides oversight to the corporate charitable donations program and provides legal advice and direction to all departments within the company. She is also responsible for corporate communications and media relations. Prior to joining Cadillac Fairview, Ms. Hardy worked as Vice President, Legal for Brahma Lee Centers Limited, a subsidiary of Brahma Lee Incorporated. She was responsible for legal services and advice relating to operations, leasing, and development functions for the company, considered to be one of the top three shopping centers companies in Canada. She advised on asset dispositions of over 10 million square feet and managed the legal department responsible for annual leasing activity over 1 million square feet. From 1986 to 1993, Ms. Hardy worked for the Trizet Corporation, Trilee Centers Incorporated, which is one of the North America's largest public real estate corporations. As associate counsel, she co-managed the legal department for the shopping center portfolio. From 1983 to 1986, Ms. Hardy uh, worked at the general corporate and uh, commercial law practice Miller, Johnson & Maxwell, barristers and solicitors in Calgary, Alberta. Ms. Hardy graduated from Southwood Secondary School in 1976 and from Carleton University with a BA in Political Science in 1979. She obtained her Bachelor of Laws LLB from the University of Victoria in 1983 and is a 2010 Director Education Program graduate from the Rotman School of Management, University of Toronto Institute of Corporate Directors. She lives in Aurora, Ontario with her husband Jim and two daughters. Ms. Hardy, if you'd like to come up and Some of you will remember me as Sandy Wilson, because that's who I was my graduates. So it was funny because when I saw the thing in the paper, I thought, I wonder how many people actually know who I am based on that. But um, this really is a great honor, and uh, I was very, very surprised to have been nominated and thrilled to have uh, received um, the recognition. Um, this, this was a fantastic high school. <laughs> I can't say enough about it. I mean, I was uh, very proud to come here and very proud to graduate. And uh, I think it, that the, the experience that a student gets through high school really shapes them. And uh, when I think of my years at, at Southwood, it was the, you know, the academic program that really um, gave me a good grounding for my post-secondary uh, school education. In addition to that, just being here was just so much fun in terms of the, you know, the sports program, the music program, the clubs. Uh, the innovation of the teaching staff was really second to none. Um, great friends, a great group of, you know, a great sense of community and uh, school spirit. I'm thrilled to see the spirit wear up there because uh, that was that was really impressive. And it, it just it just made it such a great experience. Um, Barb, Barb asked me to think about, you know, who are the teachers that really impacted you? And I think. Um, you know, every student has, has teachers that impact them good and bad. <laughs> so <laughs> they really connect with. Um, and I had absolutely no shortage of those, the least of which was, of course, the late Ross McKinnon. Um, but it's really the whole group of them that impacts you because it's such a, you know, transformational period in a student's life. And, you know, if you think of there, there are those teachers who just bring everything alive and you just love being in their classroom. They're the ones that you think are mean, <laughs> give you too much work, and there are those that you just have to work a lot harder with to really get the best out of the material. And it's the whole of that experience, um, you know, together with the, the peers, your friends, the clubs you join, your involvement in the community, um, that really shapes you. So I was lucky. Um, I, I worked hard, and, and I've been uh, very lucky and very fortunate uh, in my career. And um, this is a great honor. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, I'd now like to call upon Justin Burphy. He's an academic achiever who will be attending the business program at Laurier next year. He will introduce our second inductee, uh, Fred Clint Cameron.
Fred Klinkhammer's influence in Canadian and international media organizations has been far-reaching and impressive. He has a significant track record as a leader of companies facing startup or turnaround challenges. Over the past 40 years, Fred has served as Vice President and General Manager of Toronto-based City TV and, and President and CEO of First Choice, the movie network. He has also been President and CEO of CableNet, a Canadian-American multi-system cable operator, and President and CEO of IMAX Corporation. In addition, he created and then became CEO of MediaLinks, the multimedia arm of Belkina Enterprises, where he led the team that created Simpatico, the largest internet service provider in Canada. In 1997, Fred joined Central European Media Enterprises, a Bermuda-based media company that owns broadcast, content, and new media operations in Central and Eastern Europe. CME began as a single channel in the Czech Republic in 1994 and has grown to be the broadcast leader in six countries, reaching over 50 million people. Fred served as President and CEO of CME from 1999 to 2004 and as Vice Chairman from 2004 to 2006. Fred's contributions to the television industry were recognized in 1989 with the Canadian Film and Television Production Association's Gold Personal Achievement Award. He was a founding member of the Canadian Journalism Association and a director of the Russia-Canada Trade Council. From 2008 to 2010, Fred served as Chairman of the Board of World of Residency a luxury condo cruise liner has been chairman of Clam Harbor Holdings since 2004, a private investment company. Mr. Klinkhammer graduated from Southwood Secondary School in 1965 and from Ryerson in Business Administration in 1968. He's a certified management accountant. And I would like to call upon Fred Klinkhammer to come up and Thank all of you who, in some way, may have participated in the selection process. Not many of you in the room are old enough to know that I was a student here of sorts. <laughs> in fact, I was a rather poor student, both academically and behaviorally. I look back on those times as formative in that it was a little bit like the crucible in which the seed corn is growing that leads to who you are today. Early on in my time at Southwood, a teacher by the name of Miss Harder definitively proved to everyone that I had absolutely no facility for languages. <laughs> that meant that I wouldn't graduate unless I could find a non-language credit. If she had not intervened and done that, I probably would not have graduated. I have to confess that I am the person that was responsible for the incident in one of the chemistry labs <laughs> that I'm told is still talked about today. And I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Irving, who was one of the great teachers here at the time, because he knew he knew that it was me. <laughs> and he concocted a cover story that suggested it was spontaneous combustion. <laughs> and it was only on graduation day that he came up to me and he said, I knew. <laughs> if he hadn't looked the other way, I probably wouldn't have graduated. <laughs> there were two other men one that I only knew at the time as the chopper. <laughs> His name was Mr. McConnell. I had to go and look it up in the yearbook. Mr. McConnell was principally responsible for discipline. He was the vice principal of the school. And he held a view that anyone could be motivated if there was enough energy applied by someone like him. <laughs> and he shaped me. I think it was this side of my head. <laughs> but I would never have graduated if it wasn't for Jim Jack. Jim Jack was the principal at the time. 
And if you, those of you that have picked up one of those newspapers, he talks about hard work. And he taught me that hard work can overcome any obstacle. What no teacher knew at the time, and what I didn't know at the time, was that I have a learning disability. I was 40 years old before I found out what it was. That doesn't make up for my bad behavior, but it does explain some of the challenges that I had as a student. The remarkable thing is, with no facility for languages, the last company that I ran made 5,000 hours of television a year, none of it in English. <laughs> none, none of it in English. I was asked to try and be, I don't think the term was profound, but to leave some kernel of learning. So I've had 50 years of learning since I left the school. Here's a couple of thoughts. To paraphrase Jim Jack, find something you love and work really, really hard at it. Really hard. Because that's what he believed. And he was right. The second is, nobody likes a smart ass. <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs> and that applies equally to students and teachers. There's one teacher I remember who had such a mouth, and I won't mention his name. But I would like the opportunity of meeting him as an adult. <laughs> and finally, I'll leave you with this one clear, concise thought. Each of us is the center of a circle. The circumference of that circle is determined by our own self-imposed limitations. Think about it. Live by it. Anybody can be successful if they forget about their self-imposed limitations. Thank you for inviting me today. Thank you for this, and thank all of the teachers that I had that managed to permit me to scrape through <laughs> there, there at that time. I will say that since then I have lectured at Harvard. <laughs> Uh, we're glad, glad you could both make it to the ceremony and hope you'll join us in celebrating the 50th celebrations this weekend. I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank the people that have helped pull this together. Uh, Deanna Martin and Justin Berkby for giving up part of their weekend. Committee members Marlene Bennett and Karen Johannes. The Life Skills class, who's provided us with refreshments, which you will see very soon. Uh, Rob Baird for his assistance with the plaques in the front hall. And finally, Kevin Weidman and his graphic arts students, Alana Mulder, Danielle Root, Jacob Presswell, and Lauren Blinkhorn for their help with the class as well. So thank you all for coming, and please stay to enjoy the refreshments. Thank you.